Okay, what we're going to be talking about here is a discussion of the second ending question in Homo Deus by Harari. The question that, he, that it is, is, is what's more valuable, intelligence or consciousness? And that's what Harari is asking us. And so that's the question we're going to look at a little deeper as we go through here. We're going to start with the, a, uh, with, with the idea that, we, you know, we had the early Earth, you know, billions of years ago. And for many, many billion years, over 10 billion years, it really had physics and chemistry, and there wasn't anything really new. But biology came along in a uh, about three million, three billion years ago, and biology came along. And biology came along. All of a sudden, the king of the the world became natural selection. And natural selection is all about solving survival problems. Where if you have an organism, it it basically is able to move away from fire. Both chemical, all chemicals prior to that would have just fallen into the fire, right? And then also solve reproduction problems. So those were the two major issues that were being addressed by the a, uh, by biology. And it, what it is is basically the only way you can do that is if you, if you link the ability to, to solve things, which is algorithms with memory, and you add to that the, the, the DNA, which is the reproduction thing, and you add our senses. And altogether, those things together kind of put into a bundle of natural selection. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about natural selection. And the, the intelligence required in the early days, way in the beginning, were really very low. I mean, the, the, the survival problems and the reproduction problems, uh, uh, or at least the, the, the organisms themselves, were just had a very low intelligence. And so, but, you know, as the, as the world kind of uh, matured, uh, the natural selection uh, the, the world got more complex, and natural selection itself got the more complex. It started to deal with things like multiple dimensions. It had to deal with, with multiple dependencies, where, where we have inheritances issues. And, and, a, uh, and then it also got into where it had to deal with emergence and unpredictability. So all of a sudden, the, the complexity increased. So the intelligence, in order to deal with that complexity, the co intelligence also increased. So the added complexity, you know, but it not only, you know, added the idea that, that, that we're still, you know, along a line of, of low to high, but also it actually added color to it. It basically gave it color and dimension. So it, it became a, a, intelligence became a much more a robust item. And, and so that's with biology. Then all of a sudden, about 70,000 years ago, we had this a, a kind of a creature that, that moved along this sapiens creature. And, and what Sapiens brought to the table is they brought this idea of imagined realities. And all of a sudden, the, the natural selection was no longer the, the king. Instead, these imagined realities were. And the imagined realities gave, you know, one of the other things that happened is that Sapiens also actually increased the level of intelligence so that the uh, Sapiens are actually able to solve problems that, that a, a monkey would, wouldn't even think of the problems. And Sapiens treats them as if they're easy to do. So, but then, as, as time went by, the imagined reality problems also started to, to become more complex and also increase in their complexity. So the institutions that, that Sapiens built in order to deal with these imagined realities increased in complexity. So the, the cultural intelligence that, that, that was then necessary for Sapiens, the cultural intelligence and intelligence is, we're looking at as being like the ability to select, design, and create for our purpose. And it became the focus was on our purpose. And, and therefore, what we're talking about in terms of intelligence is we, we have this link in cultural intelligence between consciousness and intelligence itself. And so the question that, that Harari is asking us to look at is, is, okay, you know, is the idea of purpose itself held up and, and dependent 100% on the link of consciousness and intelligence together? So can we, and, and, and so that the, the idea there is that if we take Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, are, are, do we need both consciousness and intelligence to, to deal with all of those? And the, the challenge is, of course, is that we are considered a very dangerous, cruel, and insecure, and anxious species, and there we are in, in control. So then the question becomes, Harari says, is that, all right, but let's, let's look at the possibility of actually uncoupled intelligence. Can we take intelligence and uncouple it from the whole issue? And so can we have a uh, intelligence all by itself, if you will? And, and it, what does that do to our, to our Maslow hierarchy of needs? 
Uh, and one of the, the, the issues that we're looking at is, that, can it drive us to where we only have to consider some of the, 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 the basic needs? And that because we're not looking for our purpose anymore, so it's, it's not solely focused on us. And, and, and therefore, you know, can we see things like a, uh, 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 IBM's Watson and Google and, a, uh, and, and our robotics, can they basically take care of a lot of the Maslow cycle and all we have to deal with is self-esteem and self-actualization? And the question is, can purpose, can we drive purpose with just intelligence? So can intelligence stand on by itself and drive purpose? And if so, then will not Watson, Google, and, and our robotics actually uh, be able to, to deliver their own level of intelligence and their own purpose? And that's the case, you know, what's more valuable, intelligence or consciousness? It basically, the Harari argument gets back to, you know, for purpose, do we need both?